Okay, so here you'll see that um, I have the grading planning tool open. Um, this is for 8.1, our contact forces unit. Um, you'll see it's pre-populated. Um, and before we dive into this, uh, I just wanted to talk about a couple of um, things. Um, so in our district, we have to have uh, 9 to 10 meaningful grades per marking period. So that typically means a, a meaningful grade a week, roughly. Um, and meaningful is defined as something with a rubric, uh, something where we're giving the kids feedback. Um, so, uh, you know, much more than a, a, just a completion grade. Um, my co-teacher and I sat down and went through this document. And most of what we focus on is um, allowing the kids uh, to maintain their coherence. So um, making sure that our assignments align with that and we're not asking them to do something that is out of the realm of what we've been working on. Um, and also uh, making sure that our assignments support sense making. So allowing them to do something and then go back over it and improve that grade based on the feedback um, that we have uh, given them. Um, that way we can make sure that um, we are really focusing on sense making, allowing the kids to continue to improve and refine their ideas as they work through um, all these different types of assessment. So early in the unit, um, we do not have anything that goes into the gradebook. Um, this is all just formative and uh, pre-assessment. Uh, we do, however, scan through their work. Um, we focus on making sure that the work is complete, um, meaning you know, that kids are filling in their notice and wonder charts, um, that kids are drawing complete models, you know, um, trying to really uh, label things and articulate their ideas um, clearly. Um, and we also focus on giving the kids a lot of positive comments um, on their work as uh, this is early in the year and we're trying to really set the expectation um, of our uh, learning community that, you know, we're all in this and working through this, you know, difficult task together. Um, and so our progress tracker um, and our notebook uh, is not graded. Um, these are things we just leave feedback on and things that we meet with kids um, to help them um, meet the expectations of, you know, what a good progress tracker or notebook um, looks like. Um, and so in lesson three, uh, we have an assignment that we've created. So you'll notice that this is in purple, um, and that's because uh, this is an assignment that we had to create so that we could meet um, the uh, constraint, if you will, of having so many grades uh, in a marking period. So um, in lesson three, the students are uh, trying to determine if all solids bend and they've uh, done some experimentation um, and collected some evidence. Uh, so we have them um, use uh, a, a rubric that we've provided to write a CER, an argument, if you will, um, um, answering a prompt. And uh, so we collect those and grade them. They go in our gradebook under the writing category. So we have a couple of different categories. Uh, we have writing assignments, uh, graphing assignments, models, and then what we call our concept check-ins, which are essentially the transfer tasks that OpenSciad provides. Um, and so the students are able to improve this work and go back over it and resubmit it um, uh, if they are feeling like they want to improve their grade or, um, you know, really use that feedback to improve that particular assignment. Um, lesson four, uh, early on, this is all formative assessment. So again, we are, you know, meeting with tables as they're working through their experiment, making sure they really understand uh, the different variables. And we are going through their progress trackers. Um, and we, we just kind of scan through these, give them comments, um, and then, you know, work with students who are not necessarily meeting um, our expectations. Um, and then, so in this uh, lesson, in lesson four, you'll see uh, down here that we have, again, created an assignment. And so we have the students uh, turn in a graph of the data. We have a rubric that we use for this. And this is kind of a, a checklist rubric, if you will. Um, we give them some feedback on this. Uh, this is typically not an assignment that kids would uh, go back to, mostly because we found that kids do pretty well on this. It's fairly straightforward um, as uh, the rubric is guiding them in all the details that they have. Um, then in lesson five, we are formatively assessing them, um, just making sure that uh, they're on track for planning their investigation. Um, and similar to above, anytime there's a progress tracker, uh, we are just going through that, 
kind of visually looking uh, to see what's in there and um, you know helping kids improve uh, where need be. Um, we also in lesson five uh, do a model. So uh, this is sort of a, a bit summative, if you will, because uh, they've been working on some pretty big ideas. Um, it's a very low stakes assignment, so I might even label this as um, you know also kind of being formative because. Uh, we're allowing them to go back over it, we're um, guiding them, and you'll notice that the point value is pretty low, so 12 points. Most of our assignments to this point have been fairly low stakes as compared to um, the soccer assessment that comes up in lesson six. Um, but so we co-construct uh, one of the models together. Uh, in this one, they're thinking about what happens when you make changes to mass and um, speed. So we work on one of them. It doesn't matter which one. Usually the class wants to pick, um, I forget, I think it's speed first, and we talk about that. And then they do the math one on their own based on the one that we've co-constructed. But again, if they are unhappy with uh, their work based on the feedback, they can go back and improve it, resubmit it. Um, then in lesson six, we have the soccer assessment, and um, we use the assessment key. Um, and we value this at 32 points just by going through and using the key to uh, create points. So, you know, if a particular question has three aspects, we might make that a, a three point question. Um, and again, they can use all the resources that they want. We allow them to use their progress tracker, um, all of our uh, investigation documents, um, um, anything that they want to help them um, answer and support um, their work. And then again, if if they want to, they have the opportunity to go back and improve that work. So in uh, lesson seven, you'll notice we've created an assignment. This is another place where we do a CER. Um, so this is our second one for the unit. So we have two writing assignments kind of now um, in the unit to take a look at. And again, we're using the same rubric as, as uh, before, just a different prompt. Um, in lesson eight, we do have just a completion assignment. Um, so this is our uh, home learning where they do a, a, an experiment at home with a chew or a note card, whichever they pick. And this is just a you did it or you didn't kind of a assignment. Um, lesson nine, the progress tracker entry is formative and, and just as above, you know, same routine with, with the way that we give the kids feedback on that. But um, they do develop a model that they've kind of really been working on sort of since, um, uh, you know, lesson seven, eight, you know, it's been building to this point. So I kind of feel like this is a summative assignment. However, um, this is something where uh, it's low stakes again, um, and they have the opportunity to go back to it. So I kind of struggle with this whole formative summative thing. And in my mind, sometimes there's, it blurs the lines a little bit when we start to put grades in, but they're, they're low stakes. So, um, but we, we are kind of like concluding um, before we're about to take this transfer task. Um, but because it's low stakes, I might I might even again say that this is more on the formative side. Um, and so in lesson 10, we have our transfer task, our assessment. Um, we use the rubric or the key that's provided. Um, this one's valued at 32 points. Again, so this is a little bit higher stakes, um, but they have all their resources again and the opportunity to go back. So. Um, hopefully you're starting to see a common theme through here that the kids can always go back and do their work and refine it, um, which is really hopefully supporting the idea that we want to make sure that they're making sense and we're supporting that and allow them to continually refine their work. Um, so here we deviate a little bit. Um, we do lesson 11 um, uh, sort of later. Um, we do re-anchor and think about like protecting stuff. Um, but this is kind of like a, a, a sort of a, a something we do later on because we do this um, interesting take on the project at the end. Um, so we kind of skip this lesson, if you will. Um, uh, but we do re-anchor and think about like the different materials. And so when the kids do actually test the materials, um, we have them uh, do another writing assignment. Um, and uh, um, again, using the same rubric as before, give them some feedback. And this is based on that like best material and their testing. So then in 13, would they do the progress tracker entry? We just um, formatively assess that. And then 14 is kind of again in this engineering project. And I'll talk a little more about that in a second. Um, and then we do uh, have the kids go through the cheerleading headgear assessment. 
However, this, this one we have them work in teams um, and we're kind of getting them ready to do this project. Um, but we do score it out of 32. We use the keys to help us get to um, those particular points. So um, these lessons up here that we uh, did kind of move through or skip, uh, they get combined into this engineering project that we do. And we um, have this uh, larger scale project where the kids are uh, actually building a, a car that protects um, uh, this little egg person that we have. And uh, so we've developed a, a Jamboard that has uh, lots of different components of the project and we assess that using a rubric that we've kind of developed. Um, and we also uh, assess their teamwork using the, um, the Open Syed teamwork rubric. Um, that's from the flameless heater unit. So we use that actually pretty often throughout all of our units to help the kids assess um, and self-reflect on um, how they're doing when they're working in uh, groups. Um, that is not actually graded, the participation part of it. That's more just like kind of a data point and to help them reflect. Um, but we do grade the actual Jamboard. Um, one thing that I didn't put on here that I, uh, I did want to mention is throughout the unit, we are also assessing how they're doing with uh, their norms and their discussion. Um, we use Google Forms for that. And again, that's not created. That's just um, uh, formative and, and for our purposes to help the kids um, improve. But that doesn't go in the gradebook anywhere. It's just really something that we use to have um, a conversation. So as you can see, um, hopefully uh, it's clear that we are really trying to support the kids' sense-making and provide them lots and lots of opportunities to improve their work um, while also meeting the criteria of having nine to ten meaningful assignments per marking period.